Yeah, we didn't play that game. stand and praise him it doesn't matter what comes my way the greater one lives inside of me his name is jesus i'm born a winner more than victorious i'm an heir of the kingdom filled with the holy ghost It doesn't matter what comes my way, the greater one lives inside of me. His name is Jesus. I'm born a winner, more than victorious. I'm an heir of the kingdom, filled with the Holy Ghost. I rejoice in Him. I rejoice in Him. I rejoice. Oh, 
the Holy Ghost. Whoa. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Amen. Are you more than a conqueror? Yes. Are you more than victorious? Yes. Hallelujah. We rejoice. We rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. That's the way to start out today. Amen. If you need an announcement sheet, raise your hand. The usher will give you one. Anybody need one? Praise God. We'll look through that handout sheet for the lesson. And then look at the one from... Oh, mine's sticking together here. From Dutch Sheets. That's really good. Read that. Read through that. Very powerful. Look through that. Amen. What God is doing. Amen. And the plowing is really, really good. Praise God. As a, I used to plow, so I that really, really, I could relate to that. I kind of like plowing. That was kind of a fun job. <laughs> so God is plowing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Look through the different announcements here. Oh, I want to let you know that... Oh, Donald Tyler had his procedure on Friday, and everything went very well. The doctor was pleased, and he got to come home that afternoon, so everything was good. Praise God. So that was an answer to prayer. God, God is working, so praise the Lord. I went up with him the night before, and then we got to come home that day on Friday, so God is good. Amen. All the time. And... Just appreciate the, the room is coming, the, the crew room is looking really cool, 
Um, they got these letters, and Dennis had his fancy um, machine that, you, that makes a line with uh, with a laser thing, and they were able to put them up and look really good. Waiting on a couple, somebody forgot to order two extra E's. <laughs> so <laughs> I wonder who would do that. <laughs> so we'll have, well, we're missing some E's, but we'll get our E's in order. <laughs> well, I just, so excited that, that um, Paul and Lois are excited. I'm excited that they're excited <laughs> about, the, <laughs> about, about the kids, about the junior high kids. And so it's, it's cool what God is doing. Amen. And I wanted to remind you, too, that we are going to do a special. We do Family Fun Night on the fifth Wednesday. So I have been waiting for this movie. God's Not Dead number four. Praise God. We're going to show it here. And so come. And you can invite people. We're not putting it in the paper, but we're, put, but we're just going to go word of mouth. And you can and no admission. And bring it here. Bring people here, um, start right at 7, and then we're going to have some refreshments afterwards. And I know it's going to be quick to get kids home. They might have to just take them and run, but um, we'll have a good time together. So um, please pr please come on out for that day. That will be really, really good. And then just a reminder, and I know that Royce will make sure the ones that need to know this are, are the ones that aren't here, but camp registration is due next Sunday, the 27th. So we'll make sure that that is, and it sounds like this is just a rough estimate about 12 kids, which is good. That's, that's a good number. So praise God. God is good. Amen. Amen. And then we are giving to the Ukraine, and it's just circle, circle other and write Ukraine on there, and we are giving to, to a couple ministries, um, Kenneth Copeland Ministries, and also um, Mike Evans. And they're both bringing stuff in. They're actually, Mike Evans was in the Ukraine. He's actually bringing things in there and helping orphans and then taking people to Israel, too. So both these ministries are, there's, there's just scores of ministries that are doing things right now. It's really cool how everyone is stepping up and helping. So we'll do our part, too. Amen? Amen. Praise God. I think that's just, just look through it. And, and see what you're doing. And I kind of have been saying, if you're going to be able to help us like normal with the extravaganza, we're going to be going through that soon and checking. If you have a strategic job, we'll just be checking to make sure everybody is helping. If you're not going to be here and you know you're not going to be here, it's April 16th and, and you've helped in the past, then let me know. Please let me know if you've got a job that you usually do. You should know if you, if you do or not. <laughs> You'll be here. You'll be here. Good, yay! I know Janice will help with the baby egg hut, so she's been doing that for years. So we appreciate. Change to put some of the eggs. Yeah, that's what James likes to take extra change and put it in the eggs. If you want to do that, that's great. That's awesome. We're so it's. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a great time. Amen. So why don't you go around and greet everybody and tell them Jesus loves you, and so do I.
It's harping time, amen? amen. All right, praise the Lord. So, uh, given above me, on or given your tithe this morning, just mark your name, old proclaim, and then uh, you go above and beyond that, which we encourage you to do. We have a uh, um, mission project, is actually Covenant Cedars, but if you want to give to the Ukraine project, which is great, just kind of do like what Pastor John said. Um, write it in there, circle it, other, and then write Ukraine. Amen. Just encourage you to be involved in all that, a lot going on. It's uh, so interesting to see and hear how many different ministries are really becoming active. You know, one of the great failures, they say, of uh, World War II is the missionaries didn't go in fast enough. And they let they just let things kind of happen. Well... It's obvious that, and it's great that people are being more proactive and, and being really involved in, in helping them. And so <clears throat> there's all kinds of political views on what you should or shouldn't do or what, what part the United States ought to do and this and that. But, but besides that, we know what the church ought to do. Amen? Church ought to be involved and pray and not only pray but be active, you know. Uh, being active, doing something is really important. So uh, just encourage you with all that. Amen. So scripture I got for the for today is Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse ten. And uh, <clears throat> the whole that whole chapter nine is really good. If you want to read that, read through it and read the whole thing in context. It's really got some great things about giving and, and you know, God's your supplier, God's your source. He's never gonna let you go hungry. He's never gonna he's never gonna abandon you. And so he says in verse nine or verse ten, he says, He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food. So he's taking care of you, yeah. right? He's got you taken care of. Yeah. Well, so seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing, increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be rich in every way to be generous in every way. <clears throat> which through us will produce thanksgiving to God for the ministry of this service is not only for supplying the needs of the saints, but also overflowing into the many thanksgivings to God. Amen. God's got enough. He's not short. He's looking. He's anxiously looking for someone to be proactive. And that's not just in, in the spirit realm. It's in the physical realm. He wants you to be active in everything that you do. Serve him with all that you have and glorify him. Amen? All right. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you so much for today. Thank you, Lord, you continue to watch over us and help us and give us wisdom and insight. Thank you, Lord, for the word. Thank you for the truth. And thank you for the blood that cleanses us from sin. We thank you for the body that was broken for our health. And Lord, we just thank you for all that you're doing for us. Thank you for the, all that you're doing for us in your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Let's do our confession. Let's a tithe and give offerings. I'm leaving you, Lord, for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits and promotion, sales and commission, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, discounts and dividends, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills decreased, bills paid off, blessings and increase, and greater victories in the midst of greater odds. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all my needs. You may have more than enough to give to promote the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name. Isn't the name of Jesus beautiful? 
fell in line with one voice creation cries you do all things well you do all things well be
That's how long you're worthy. So that's how long I'll bring you praise. That's how long you're worthy. That's how long I'll bring you praise. That's how long you're worthy.
worship you Lord just worship Jesus Jesus we love you so much we worship you we love you so much hallelujah praise him from your heart today praise him from your heart today Jesus we love you so much Jesus we love you so much hallelujah 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 Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus, I love you so much. So much. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. My Jesus. My Jesus. Oh, my Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 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 Oh, hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Glory to God, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Father, thank you, Father, thank you, Father. Oh, Jesus, we love you so much. Hallelujah. Just think about it. It's not going to be quiet in heaven. <laughs> if you like it quiet, well, you'll have your time. But there's going to be times when it's loud. And there's going to think of the millions and the billions of the people that are going to be singing at the top of their lungs. Think of the angels of God praising him. Praise in him for eternity. Hallelujah! 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 Glory to God! 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 We worship you, Lord! We worship you, Lord! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Glory, 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 ha, 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 thank you, Lord, ha, 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 thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, glory, 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 hallelujah, glory to God, thank you, Lord, hallelujah, don't forget that praise is a weapon, praise is a weapon to defeat the devil every time. When he tries to tell you you're defeated, he tries to tell you you're depressed, he tries to tell you that you're sick, he tries to tell you that you're poor. Ha 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 ha! Ha 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 ha! I laugh at you, devil, and I praise you, Lord. Praise is a weapon that defeats the devil every time. Praise is a weapon that defeats the devil every time. He wants you to shut your mouth. No, you don't do that. You don't open your mouth up. Never face your mountain with your mouth shut. Never face your mountain with your mouth shut. 
but always praise the Lord. Always praise the Lord. Praise Him when you feel like it. Praise Him when you don't. Praise Him every day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Woo. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Yeah, we can have a we don't have it quiet in church. It can be loud. <laughs> amen. 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 Jesus. 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 Oh, we love you, Lord. Oh, we praise you. Oh, we bless you. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're doing in each one of us. Thank you that we have, we're not trying to get that victory. We've already sang about it. We have the victory. We're more than conquerors. We believe what we sing. We believe what we say. And we're going to act like it. We're going to act like it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, glory to God. You can be seated if you can. But you're probably going to be up in a minute. Because Diane is going to sing some for us. And we're glad to have Diane Shermeyer here. She's on spring break, so... She came and she going to pray. She going to sing for us. studying about hail and uh, we talked about how, how hail is formed and then the book told us the, the largest and at the timing of the book that was printed it was about the, the largest hail size of a cantaloupe about six to eight inches in uh, diameter and so we were going wow over that and so I said in the I teach at a Christian school so I can say these things but it's wonderful um, I said, in the Old Testament, there are stories of how God defeated Israel's enemies with hail, just pouring down hail upon them. And, and the kids were, you know, they started smiling a little. Their eyes were getting big, you know. And I said, wouldn't it be cool if out of a clear sky, God rained down hail on the Russian armies? Just out of a clear blue sky, here come these. Th God would have to get the glory for that one, wouldn't he? So I had these kids, this one boy in the back was going, I said, shall we pray? And they were going, yes. And it's, it's great. The kids, the kids would just go for it. You know, they, they're not held back by all these, well, how's that going to happen? You know, maybe God won't. But we just prayed that the Lord would just do miraculous things that he would get honor for, whether it's hail. I mean, we prayed specifically for hail because that's what we were studying. So it, that night, I, I can sometimes flip through YouTube just to see, uh, you know, what's not what's going on this, but uh, Hank Kunum is on there and different ones I see. And I saw this, it was from CBN, and it was a report about a, a Ukrainian soldier called his dad to pray because he was facing the enemy really quickly. And so the church started praying from Ukraine, and the report was from this son that strange things, like lightning bolts, but strange uh, amazing things they couldn't answer were coming down from heaven and destroying tanks and I'm going <laughs> so of course I had to share that with the kids the next day in class and I showed them the little clip from YouTube and it's still I think it's still on YouTube if you go to CBN Ukrainian miracles or something but it's just amazing testimony and I just thought I needed to share that with you that God is doing big things, and we sometimes get stuck in God doing nothing. I don't know. That we don't see God working. Plus, I don't feel anything. And if I'm not feeling it, of course, it's not happening, which is a lie, too. Um, so I just would encourage you to keep your eyes fixed on Jesus and what he is, what he is doing. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus. <coughs> 
the author and finisher of our faith. Let us look into his eyes of love to behold his glory and his grace. Lay aside every weight, lay aside every sin, lay aside every tie that binds your heart. Throw your cares upon the Lord, throw your burdens into his arms, lay your surrender at his feet. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Let us look into his eyes of love to behold a two-edged sword put on the robe of righteousness to stand in holiness before the lord lay your life in full surrender at his feet let us fix our eyes on jesus the author of our faith. Let us look into his eyes of love to behold his glory and his grace. Put on the armor of God so that you can take your stand against the forces of evil in the heavens. that binds your heart. Throw your cares upon the Lord. Throw your burdens into his arms. Lay your life in full surrender at his feet. Yes, Lord. would say and do not say well what about this and what about that and what about the gas prices and what about our money and what about our retirement and what about this and what about that trust in the Lord with all your heart and repent do not fear and repent. Do not question, but repent. Do not look here and there and wonder about this and that, but look unto me, the author and finisher of your faith. I have everything in the palm of my hand. 
You do not need to worry about anything. I've got it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 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 the Lord is speaking to you about repenting about anything that you're not trusting him for now's the time don't wait till you get home now's the time to come before him and surrender surrender everything surrender every fear every question every doubt And he is going to flood you with confidence. He will heal what needs to be healed. He will restore all that needs to be restored. He is a big God.
thank you, Diane. We just might have you come back at the end for Never Face Your Mountain with Your Mouth Shut at the end. Let's, let's, we'll end it with that. That'll be good. <laughs> There'll be a reason for that, too, so that'll be good. Praise God. That was God. That was great. Well, amen. Just the presence of the Lord. Just a sweet presence. Let's just go ahead and do our confession over the Bibles. Just lift your Bible up to the Lord. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we thank you for your presence today. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for what you are doing in each one of us in our lives, Father God. And we thank you as we are talking about divine healing today. You are the healer. Jesus is the great physician. And we thank you for the promises in your word. And we thank you, Father, it is your will to heal all the time. Not sometime, not somebody, everyone. Thank you, Father, for that. Thank you for your promises and your word. And we stand on your promises. We stand on your word. We don't go, aren't moved by what we see or what we hear or what we feel, but we stand on what the word of God says, and we thank you for it today. And we thank you, Holy Ghost. You are welcome here in, in this, this place today. We thank you for signs, wonders, and miracles, gifts of the Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you for all that you want to be said and done. Thank you for the anointing that destroys the yoke of bondage. And we receive from you today, and we give you the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So, and look at, and, and just at the, we will be going through, I wrote it on the back of there, there's a little, um, back of your handout sheet, there's a little mini book by Kenneth W. Hagen, Pastor Hagen, Seven Main Hindrances to Receive Divine Healing. And I wrote them on there. I thought they were really good. So that's something you can think about, meditate. If there's anything there that might be keeping you from being healed, there's just some things to, for you to just to, to think about and ask the Lord about. So here's some, here's some good old corny jokes. And I got this one from Linda Schauger. Why did the cow cross the road? Why did the cow cross the road? To get to the grass on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> the other side. <laughs> well, good. You're you're right. On, you're ready for me. Good job. Why couldn't the leopard escape from the zoo? Why couldn't the leopard escape from the zoo? He was always spotted. He was always. Oh, there he's ready for me. <laughs> good job. What kind of what kind of bird carries the most weight? What kind of bird carries the most weight? A crane. And it's not Shirley Crane. <laughs> I had to say that, that part. It's not Shirley Crane. <laughs> it's a crane. <laughs> Where does a penguin keep his money? Where does a penguin keep his money? Well, I wouldn't mind seeing a little bit more of this. In a snowbank. In a snowbank. <laughs> oh, now that's cute. <laughs> Hey, good job today on those. Those, are pretty, those aren't bad. Not bad, not bad. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He does get an email, so he has a little bit of insight <laughs> to what I'm going to use for, jo for jokes, okay? He's, he's not doing the word of knowledge up there, okay? And no, I don't want to exalt Glenn Barley that much. <laughs> anyway, anyway. <laughs> now that sounds just like him. <laughs> That's exactly glad. <laughs> anyway, we'll briefly go through what we've been talking about here, the tenets of faith. We're going to go through these. I can't believe we're on number eight already. We talked about the scriptures. We know God's word is true. We can stand on his word. We talked about the Godhead, number two, and the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Number three, we talked about man, his fall and redemption, and the only way that we can be redeemed is through Jesus. Number four, we talked about eternal life and the new birth. 
Number five, we talked about water baptism. Baptism does not save you, but it's an outward sign of what has happened inwardly. Number six, we talked about the baptism in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. And that is for today. And we are praying, that in what more time, right now would be the time that you need to be able to pray in the Holy Ghost and pray for this world. And then number seven we had last week was sanctification. We don't hear this word very often. It's being set apart to live a holy life to God. And every Christian has been sanctified and we need to continue to be sanctified every day. So today we're going to talk about divine healing. And that's a lot to get, it's a big subject to try to do in one time. We're just going to do a real brief overview of it. But divine healing, healing is for the physical ills of the human body and is wrought by the power of God through the prayer of faith and by the laying on of hands. It is provided for in the atonement of Christ and is the privilege of every member of the church today. So it, first of all, we need to know that it is God's will to heal. It is always God's will to heal. Healing is for the physical ills of the human body and is wrought by the power of God through the prayer of faith and by the laying on of hands. Amen. Mark 16, 18. Mark 16, 18. I'm going to go pretty quick here. I'm going to try to get through all this. They will be able to handle snakes with safety, and if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick, and they will be healed. Amen? So every believer can lay their hands on the sick, and they will be healed. We're talking about later about elders, but it's not just the elders. Everybody who is a born-again Christian and knows their authority in Christ can lay hands on the sick and expect them to recover. The Word says that, and you can do that. Amen? And then James 5, 14 through 15. James 5, 14 through 15. Are any of you sick? You should call the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick, and the Lord will make you well. And if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. So you can pray the prayer of faith, a prayer offered in faith, will heal the sick, and the Lord will make you well. And then also you can... When as, as you're led, you can use anointing oil. Now, is the oil miraculous? Is it what's going to heal you? No, but the Lord can work through that anointing oil, and he, he can bring his tangible healing anointing through the act of doing of anointing people with oil or laying hands on the sick. And then Psalm 103, verses 2 through 3. Psalm 103, verses 2 through 3, but I'm reading in the Amplified Classic Edition. I like what it says here. It says, Bless, affectionately, gratefully praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not one of all his benefits. Now, we're going to read this really slowly. Number three, verse three. Who forgives every one of all your iniquities, who heals each one of you, each one of all your diseases. So he heals us all, every... He forgives every one of us, and he heals each one of all your diseases. So this is a scripture you can give people, especially the Amplified, that it says he heals each one of your diseases. Every one. It's God's will to heal all and every one of the diseases of sickness. It is God's will to heal everyone. We can show that in the Word. Psalm 107, verse 20. Psalm 107, verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. God sent his word so that you can be healed. He sent his word and healed them. Now we're going to talk now for a little bit about methods of divine healing. Now we talked about the tenets of faith, and there's two basic ones here, and that's what we read about at the beginning here. But it's for the physical ills of the human body is wrought by the power of God through the prayer of faith and by the laying on of hands. So I always have to have a little something to illustrate this. The prayer of faith. We can pray the prayer of faith. And once you pray the prayer of faith, you don't have to pray it over and over and over and over again. You pray and then you stand on the word and you thank God for it. You praise him and you thank him for it in the name of Jesus. 
Now, is there anybody sleeping? <laughs> this is my hands. They lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So, ooh. <laughs> I've got extra hands today. Lay hands on the sick. So this is going to remind me that I can lay hands on the sick. And then we're going to show uh, various ways that we can do that. Okay, so if anybody's sleeping, I'm going to go <laughs> by you. So remember pr the prayer of faith and the laying on of hands. The prayer of faith and the laying on of hands. Okay, we're going to go through these. The healing anointing. The healing anointing. Also, which can be called the gifts of healing, too. It can also be called the gifts of healing. The anointing of healing power comes as God wills. There's times in a service when the healing power of God will start flowing during the service. And the healing comes through the faith in the word of God, and it, and it always works. The healing anointing is a tangible substance that can be transferred from one person to another through touch. Have you felt the healing anointing of God before? I'm sure you have. You've been healed by the healing anointing. I'm sure. Raise your hand if you've been healed by the healing anointing. Look at that. Look at that. That's awesome. It, it can be stored in a cloth. And we have the prayer cloths. We have the healing. We have the anointing oil. We have the prayer cloths here. Now, does this... By itself, that's not going to heal anything. It's not going to heal a gnat's wing, right? That's what Brother Hagin would say, <laughs> a heal a gnat's wing. Or the cloth is not going to heal anybody either. It's the anointing of God transferred through that cloth or the anointing of God transferred, the, transferred through that oil that's going to heal. Amen. Praise God. So, God, okay, I lost my train of thought here. Okay, yes, this is, all, and, and the healing power must be administered by faith. It can be increased by fasting and prayer. The stronger the anointing, the more instant healings will occur. This is often with the corporate anointing. When there's more people here, the corporate anointing can be very strong. Now, let me tell you something, too, before we go on. God has designed our bodies to heal themselves, too. And that's a beautiful thing that we should realize. They auto-heal to a limited extent. Under normal circumstances, the body will heal itself. Now, um, you cut yourself, and it heals. Now, James taught me a way to, to heal my little cuts by putting glue on them. <laughs> and it's good for a while, but thank God that glue, it, the, the skin actually will heal, <laughs> thank God, under that glue. But it does, it, it, I've had so many of those little cuts this year because my hands have been so dry. But you cut yourself, and you don't even think about it, but God has made your body to heal itself. It's awesome. And it will repair itself. And, and if we tear our skin, we break a bone, we get infected, or catch certain viruses, and God can even take this recovery process and, and make it quicker. Do you realize that? He can even take that bone, the bone, something fell down there. <laughs> he can take the bone and, and heal it quicker than normal. And sometimes he can absolutely heal it instantly. Now, God can use doctors, and he can use nurses and medicine, and there is nothing wrong, read my lips, there is nothing wrong with a doctor or a nurse or a hospital or, or medicine when you need it. But you should always, repeat, always pray. And, and, and make sure you pray for your doctor. Make sure you pray over your medicine because you can't just trust in that. You need to trust in God. But he can use medicine. He can use doctors. He can use surgery. He can use these things. And he can also he spe speed up the process of what the surgery can do and, and, and you can recover quicker than what they would say or chemo or radiation or any of those things. God can use those things. And it's not something to be ashamed of either. The natural and the supernatural working together makes an explosive force for God. Amen? Amen. Praise God. But we always, we don't forget about the, the, the supernatural healing, but we don't forget about what God's given us through doctors and nurses and medicine. And let me say this, too. Uh, exercise and good nutrition. Very good for us, right? Amen. 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 So, 1 Corinthians 12, 9 and 11. 1 Corinthians 12, 9 and 11. 
to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as He wills. These gifts or manifestations of the Spirit operate by the sovereignty of God as He wills. In other words, the person with these gifts cannot operate them when he or she wants them. So the healing anointing can just, the corporate anointing can just flow in here, or the healing anointing can come upon the pastor or an evangelist, and you can have what you call, a, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, a gift of healing to lay hands on the sick. And you've seen that. But it's when God leads them to minister this way, and we call these healing anointings. God initiates healing by this method. In other words, it's not up for us to decide a healing gift should manifest. Faith may still be involved, but the Lord initiates healing when the person has no faith. However, you don't have to wait for him to move in this way. He has provided other methods for us to receive healing, which we can initiate. And then another one we talked about on it was calling the elders or the pastors of the church to pray for you. And we read that, and I'll read through it again here, James 5, 14 through 15. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call of the elders of the church. Let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. If he had committed sins, he will be forgiven. Here the sick person asks people to pray for them. In other words, the sick person initiates the healing. He starts the process, not God. Another method mentioned here is anointing the sick person with oil. And we can be anointed with oil. Number three, praying for one another. A very good thing. Praying for one another. James 5.16. So that's just the next verse over. Confess your trespasses to one another. And pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. And I can tell you an example of this a year ago. I hurt my left leg. It was um, strained, strained muscle. And I was on a walker. Yes. And some of you are like, well, what are you doing with a walker? And I'm walking around here with a walker. And it happened on Saturday after we came home from Winter Bible. And James and um, Tim Spear had to take me to the hospital, the ER. I thought maybe I was having a blood clot or couldn't hold any weight on it at all. But then that Wednesday night, I came Sunday and I came Wednesday. And I remember Linda had fallen. She slipped on the rug. At, the rug was slip, slippery at Dollar General. Tripped on, tripped on it. Tripped on it. And so you... Like that, the concrete Okay. So you had a leg that was bothering you, and I had a leg that was bothering me, and I remember the scripture, pray one for another. I would just slid myself over into the chair by her on a Wednesday night before church, and I said, I'm praying for you, you pray for me. Pray for one another. After that service, it was a total healing, and I didn't need that walker. The next day, I got rid of that walker, didn't need it anymore. That was one, one example when God just led me to go pray for her by faith, slide myself over there and do that when I didn't feel like it, and I did it, and God healed her, and God healed me, and it was awesome. <laughs> Amen. I won't forget that. God did that. So that's an example of praying one for another. You want to get, get healed, go pray for people. Go pray for them to be healed, and you'll be healed. Amen? Praise God. Amen. That's awesome. Okay. So James 5.16 says in, in the New King James, Confess your trespasses one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. And I like what the Amplified says. Confess to one another therefore your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray also for one another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart. I like that. To a spiritual tone of mind and heart the earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man and a righteous woman makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. I love that. It makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. Amen? That's awesome. So that needs your faith. Number four, use the name of Jesus. Use the name of Jesus. John 16, 23. And in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. And that day includes today. Right now, you can use the name of Jesus 
and you can thank you in Jesus' name that I am healed and whole. Jesus' name, you are healed and whole. You can speak the name of Jesus. There's power in that name. Then number five is the general laying on of hands. And we just touched on that earlier too, Mark 16, 17 through 18. Jesus said, these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Laying, hand on, laying on of hands is probably the most common method to receive healing. So you can do that. You don't have to be a pastor to do that. Any believer can do that. But here's one that we all need to do. This one takes some effort on your part. This one takes a little bit of work. <laughs> Believe the Word of God. Get to know the Word of God. Stand on the Word. What does the Word say? Find scriptures to stand on to believe. Amen? Amen. Mark eleven twenty three. 23. What, what, whoever shall say unto this mountain, or any mountain in one's life, be removed and be cast into the sea and will not doubt in his heart. Believe that those things which he says will come to pass. He will have whatever he says. And we know I love Diane's song and we will be singing that here. Never face your mountain with your mouth shut. And sickness and disease is a mountain. And it can be moved. Amen. So don't keep your mouth shut. There's times when you should shut up. <laughs> but this is not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't really like to say shut up. I just never have liked to say that. But there are times when we should. Because <laughs> you don't speak doubt and unbelief. Amen. But there's times when you need to keep your mouth open. So, so some of us are not speaking enough. And some of us are speaking too much. Don't tell everybody about your problem. Right. Don't go around telling everybody about your mountain. Hey, here's my mountain, here's my mountain, here's my mountain. I got a bigger mountain than you. Ha, 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 my mountain's bigger than yours. No, don't do that. But speak to the mountain. Tell it it has to leave. It cannot stay. I don't want that thing around here, and I'm not going to keep making it bigger. You know, I don't know if you ever watch VeggieTales, but there was one about the big lie, and the little boy about breaking the... The little asparagus, it was Junior Asparagus, I believe. It's been a long time ago. He broke a plate, and he told a lie about everything. And there was this monster that every time he, he said a lie, it grew and it grew and it grew. And that was his mountain. So every time you speak about your sickness and how bad you feel, you're just helping that mountain to go grow, grow, grow. But if you want it to shrink, 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 then don't speak uh, for it. Speak against it. Stop it. And, then, and as soon as that... As soon as Junior started telling the truth, the big old pickle, I think he was, he started shrinking, shrinking, shrinking until he was gone. And he couldn't do anything to Junior anymore because Junior finally told the truth. So speak the word of faith over your mountain, and it has to go. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. When there is no one else to call upon, we can trust God and his word. This is God's best method for us. We learn to appropriate the healing scriptures for ourselves. Find scriptures that promise you what you need. That's what Brother Hagin tells us from the beginning, right? It requires consistent faith and learning to grow in faith. It requires constantly and consistently keeping God's word before you. You can confess God's word every day. Have the scriptures that promise you what you need. And then number, the next one is prayer clause. Or this would be a peculiar anointing. Acts 19, 11 through 12. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought in unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. So the, the, Holy, the, the Holy Ghost, the anointing, can be on a tangible thing, on, 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 a, on a cloth, or as Rama uses... Beanie babies for the children, a cute little beanie baby. They can lay hands on those beanie babies and then, and then put them on the kids, and the anointing of God flows through them. Now, I'll tell you an example that I had of the intangible anointing of God. <laughs> this is cool, really cool. I'll never forget it. 
Um, you know, Brian McCallum was one of my um, instructors at Rama. Several of you Rama grads have had Brian McCallum. Just love him. Just loved him. And he passed away, went home to be with the Lord. And we, I sent a check, we sent a check to, to his wife, June, in the mail. And I remember getting a card from June. I remember standing, I was here, I must have been at the pulpit, you know, and opening my mail up. I, op I opened that card up, and an anointing came out of that card that was so strong I almost fell over in the pulpit. I have never had that happen before. But think about it. And then I, I just tell you this, if you can, if you're praying for someone and you send them greeting cards and, and Christmas cards, pray over them. Pray the anointing into those cards. Because I can tell you from experience, I about fell over. And I don't know what exactly got imparted to me, but it was something wonderful. I think it could have been very much the anointing from Brian and from June that I received from that card. I, that, I know that lady prayed over that card. I just know it in my heart. She prayed over that card, and I received it. So you can do that. We, you know what we do? We go when we're ready, the prayer group, we've been doing this for years. We don't pray over every individual egg, the plastic eggs that we, but we do go and we touch, we go back here and we touch the totes and we even sometimes open it up and touch the bags and we pray in the spirit and we pray over those eggs that are being laid out. And, and the anointing of God's tangible. Why not? We, we do that. So let's let the Lord Holy Ghost um, lead you in these peculiar anointings, these special anointings. He may have you pray over someone or someone's car or house or something and, and you don't know what's going to happen. God can do that. He can do special, special miracles. So I'm going on to the next point here. Healing is in the atonement. Healing is in the atonement. It's provided for in the atonement of Christ and is the privilege of every member of the church, church today. Well, let me go through it real briefly here. But a lot of people say, well, what is the atonement? What does that really mean? Well, Brother Hagin had a really good article, and this is just a small part of it. What is the atonement? The children of Israel lived under the old covenant and marked the Mosaic law. Whenever they broke the law, which was inevitable, the priests made an atonement or covering for their sins once a year on the Day of Atonement. The Old Testament describes two remarkable things that took place on this day. First, the high priest carried the blood of an innocent animal into the Holy of Holies and sprinkled it on the mercy seat. That blood covered the sins the children of Israel had committed the previous year. Second, the priest symbolically placed the sins of the people on the scapegoat by laying his hands on the animal's head and confessing the people's sins over it. The scapegoat was then turned loose in the wilderness to be devoured by wild beasts. This sin offering had to be repeated year after year because it only covered the Israelites' sins. Their sin nature still remained in them. Eternal life, the greatest event that can ever take place in any person's life, could not be provided until Jesus, the perfect sacrifice, had come. And Jesus brought redemption. Jesus brought atonement. Revelation 1.5. Revelation 1.5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. He took his own blood and washed our sins away. Jesus washed and cleansed us of all our sins in the atonement. But thank God that's not all that he did. 1 Peter 2.24, and you know it. 1 Peter 2.24 who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. He not only atoned for your sins, but also for your sickness and disease. Amen. You, by his stripes, by his stripes, you were healed. Matthew 8, 17. That it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Isaiah the prophet, saying, he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. He already did it for you. Amen. Amen? Isaiah 53, 4 through 5. 
Surely he has borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. If we were, then we are. Amen. I'm healed, I'm whole, from the top of my head to the bottom of the tips of my toes. And that is a song that David Ingalls sings, and I love it. And it speaks about that. So there are reasons here, we're going to go through this quickly, why people don't get healed, but it is always God's will to heal them. But Kenneth, H Kenneth W. Hagen, Pastor Hagen, he wrote a little mini book, Seven Main Hindrances to Receiving Divine Healing. You can follow me on the back here. They do not, number one, they do not prepare themselves to receive healing. You need to get your faith boosted up. You need to look at scriptures about whatever it is you're believing God for and get your faith charged up, and you'll be ready. Number two, they question whether or not it is the will of God to heal them. My, mo my dear mother, who loved God, and she, she said God could heal if he chose to, but if he didn't want to, he wouldn't. Well, that was wrong teaching. That was tradition. We need to know in our hearts. You need to get into your heart. Don't let the devil tell you something. I like something that Darren said in, in, this week. He said, God, the devil doesn't speak to you in his voice. He speaks to you in your voice. Think about that. Isn't that good? He speaks to you in your voice. He lies to you. He makes it think that's you and, and, and that's true, but it's a lie. It's a lie. So he, God don't want to heal you. You're not worthy. How could you be healed? Everyone else is going to get healed, but you're not. That's the devil. Amen. Number three, many do not receive healing because of sin in their life. 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And check your love walk. Faith worketh by love. If you're not walking in love, if you have, and it said that in the scripture about James, you know, if there's any sin, he can be forgiven of that. Well, ask God if there's anything in your life, forgive me, Lord, and I'm not going to hold anything against anyone. I don't want to have anything against anybody. I want to love everybody because I do not want it to short-circuit my faith. Number four, many do not receive healing because they are relying on the arm of the flesh. Well, what do you mean by that? If I could just get Pastor Hagen, if I could just get Craig Hagen, if I could just get Brother Copeland, if I could just get that person to heal, I'll be healed. What about Jesus? I thought he was the one I healed. <laughs> he is the only one that heals. So don't think of some person. Don't think of doing something, something in the flesh. Re remember, it's God. Jesus is the healer. Don't look to the arm of the flesh. Don't look to people. Don't get your eyes on people. Number five, many people remain unhealed because they never set a specific time for their healing to be manifested. And I don't believe he's saying, well, I'm going to be healed on April 1st, 2022, but I can believe God that my, my, my healing is now, you can, you can set a certain time and you can be specific, the Lord can show you that, and you can just continue to, to work on that, but have goals, have things that you can do, that you, you know, you can say, well, I'm going to be able to do this that I haven't been able to do by this time. That's a goal that you can say, if, I, if you hadn't been able to walk five blocks, Say, I'm going to be able to walk three blocks by such and such a time. And then I'm going to be able to walk four blocks by such and such a time. I'm going to be able to walk five blocks by such and such a time. And you realize it takes healing for you to be able to do that. And, and you're given a time and you're giving God something to work with. So think about that. Mark 11, 24. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you, desire, you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Number six. Maybe people do not get healed because they don't desire something. Well, I just, I'm just praying to be praying. Well, then you're not praying. You have to have a specific desire, specific need that you are praying for, believing it, get the scriptures that promise it, and stand on it. Be specific. Number seven, people do not receive healing because they are spiritually lukewarm. And only you can change that. You can get yourself on fire for God and hot for God and, and, and get into the, under the anointing. Be in church. 
be in prayer, be under the word, and listen to other uh, ministers speak. There's ways to stir up the anointing of God and get yourself hot for God. Amen? Amen. Healing is the privilege of every member of the church today. Believe that you receive your healing. Well, let's have Diane, we're going to have you come up, and we're going to, to, to sing that song. If you have need of healing during this song, I want you to ask God to touch you, to heal you. You put, put your hand wherever you need to be putting it on and, and believe in God. This is an act of faith so that you can be, get healed by singing a song. You realize that? That's an act of faith. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Never face your mouth and with your mouth shut. 
Never face your mountain with your mouth shut. Thank you, Lord, for the healing power of God flowing through each person today. We receive in Jesus' name. We receive in Jesus' name pain you have to leave, sickness you have to leave in the name of Jesus, infirmities you have to leave in the name of Jesus, depression you have to leave in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Be made whole. Be made whole in Jesus' name. We receive. We receive your word in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. The healing anointing, the healing anointing. Thank you, Father. The healing power of God flowing through us. If you're watching on Facebook, just lift, sit, put your hands out. Say, thank you, Lord. I receive in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I receive the healing anointing in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I call it done. In Jesus' name. I'm the healed of the Lord. I'm the healed of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. He sent his word and he healed me. Thank you, Father, by his stripes. I am healed and whole. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. I'm healed. I'm whole from the top of my head to the tips of my toes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm healed. I'm whole. I'm well. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I didn't say this, but there's one thing that's better than healing. You know what's better than healing? Divine health. Divine health is better than healing. Because then you don't have to pray to be healed because you're already. You have the health of God in you. The health of God is springing forth in you. Hallelujah. Just thank Him for the divine health of God. Divine health of God in every area of your life. Well, thank you. Pr appreciate that. That was awesome. You may be seated. Thank you, Lord. If there's any other needs here before we go today, we'll pray for those. I got a couple already that people told me about. Is there anybody? Yes, Nancy. No, I don't. I know who he is. I didn't even know. I didn't even know what his real name was. <laughs> I knew his way. I knew his dink. <laughs> Amen. Anybody else? Don, I've got your sister on there, Julia. She's still at the Kansas City or she is, but she's doing much better. I think she's only in rehab only. Praise God. She broke her hip. She just got out of the nurse out of the nursing home, got home, and then she broke her hip. Oh. But she's but we prayed that she would heal quickly. Praise God. Yes, Diane. What's wrong with Larry? Larry? His wife just fought that. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody? Okay, well, let's pray. Father, Matthew 8, 17 is the prayer of agreement. We are just agreeing and calling these things done in Jesus' name. And we just lift up, um, Linda is your grace, great niece, right? Her great niece, Gentry Effenbeck, Effenbach, uh, five months old, um, possible water on the brain. So we see the doctor this week. We just speak over this little baby and we call her healed and whole completely from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, every organ, every tissue of her body. Functions of perfection which you created function. Fluid on the brain, you be gone in Jesus' name. Brain, you be normal. And we thank you. We're just thanking for a good report when they check it out. Everything is going to be well and good and right with that baby. We just call it done in Jesus' name. We thank you for 
Lord, we speak over that little baby in Jesus' name. That baby will live and die not to, and declare the works of the Lord and be completely normal in Jesus' name. And we just lift up Don's sister, Julia. We just thank you, Lord, that um, she is healing up quickly and be able to go to rehab and do well with that, Father. The strength of God, the healing power of God, and as we spoke about it, you can help those bones to heal even quicker than what they normally would, would heal. We thank you for it. You're knitting her back together, mending her completely better than before. We just thank you for it. Every organ, every tissue of her body functions in the perfection which you created to function. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And we lift up Dink Snyder. We just speak over him, Father. And we thank you for he the healing power of God. As they stimulate him, Father God, that he'll be able to swallow. That we speak over that right side. He's able to move it. Every organ, every tissue of his body functions in the perfection which you created to function. Thank you for it, Father, in the name of Jesus. Touch him, Father, in Jesus' name. Anoint the doctors and nurses, and we just thank you and call that done. And, Father, we lift up Larry Lunzer. We curse cancer by the roots of his existence. He will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Help him to know that you are Lord and Savior. Help him to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus and labors across his path. Just minister to him, Father. We thank you for it in the name of Jesus, and we call that done in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you all. We do have choir practice right after church today, so please come for that. And thank you all for, for being here today, and God bless you. We will be back. Um, we'll have Grub and Grow Tuesday, we got, and then Wednesday we've got um, church, we got Bible study, we got youth group, we got crew and Amped and Children's Church. So God bless you all, and we just have a great and wonderful day. Enjoy the nice weather. We love you. God bless you.